Hi everyone, in this video, we'll carry forward from the last one where we discussed question 1 and 1.1 in which we focused on calculating the average price for X number of days. If you uh, remember or if you or if you haven't seen that video, please see that video before jumping onto this one because it will be very, very crucial and I cannot stress this importance enough um, that knowing the concept in the previous video will help you in this video, right? So in that video, what we discussed was we use Google Finance function to get the overall data set ran a sort function on a date to a sort to a sort it in a descending order so that the latest date comes at the top, pick the X amount of rows, that is 50 rows, and then wrap those rows in an average function to get the average price for the previous 50 training days. Now, what if we want to get the highest price and the lowest price that the stock traded at in that 50 period range, right? This might just indicate the volatility of the stock in the past 50 days or the 200 days or how many ever days you want the information at. So in this question, all we need to do here is just change the average function into a match function and the sort function a bit so that we can get the maximum and the minimum price in that particular range, right? So before we do that, we need to understand that the Google Finance function we used in the previous video was only focused on the closing price. It didn't take into account the open high and low price. So how do we get this high information in the Google Finance function and not the closing information to get this particular, uh, you know, data that we need to acquire. To do that, we start with a simple Google Finance function, which is all. Let's just put the attribute call all in the range today minus 365 till today on a daily time frame. We get all the price level and the volume level data that Google Finance is storing in its database, right? So for at ITC, I can see here, I have the open price, high price, low price, close price. Now, if you just want to see column D, you need to replace this all with a high, right? And the moment you do that, you see that we only have the high information now. And if you want the low one, you just replace it with the low and you'll get the low information. If you want the open one, you want to do it with the price open and you'll get the open information. Sorry, open. Right, you get the open information here. If you want the closing price, you can do it with the price and you get the closing price information. So right now, I, do, I have using the all information so that you can see what all information we get when we use Google, the Google Finance function and we can call any column as per our requirement whenever needed. Now, getting that out of the way, if we only look at the high column, I want to know in the past 50 trading days, what is the highest price ITC was traded at, right? So how to do that? Let's first start with the Google Finance function. We get the data completely fine. I just explained that in cell B276, this function is completely okay. If, if you don't remember that, please remind it and understand it again. Now, I want to sort the dates in a descending order, right? So this will help me do that. Sort column one and ascending is equal to false, that means it's descending, right? Because the date, the recent, the date, it should come at the top, right? So once I do that, I have sorted my data frame and stored it. Now I run a query over it to select only the top 50 rows. If the most recent date is on the top, then selecting the top 50 rows will be the latest 50 trading days available in the data set, right? Okay, now I have that. Now, I, the price information is only in column two. It's not in column one. Column one is dates, column two is price. So I only select column two, right? Now I don't need the average price, right? Now I need the maximum price it traded at. So I change the average function to a max function and you can see it works. In the past few trading days, the highest price I traded was at 481.5. In the past 200 trading days, the maximum price I traded at was 499.7 and you can see it's just a, a limit change. I just changed that 50 to a 200. That's all I did. So let's copy paste this formula and paste it here. Right? And I will remove this uh, dollar so that it can run for SBI as well. So we can see the 50 day high price for ITC is uh, 481.45 and for SBI is 774.6, right? Perfect. Now, what do we do for the low price, right? 
how do we calculate the low price? I told you that if you change high to a low, then that should work, right? Okay, we did that. Now the 50 day low price, I'm getting it as 474.2, but the current market price is 405. Of course, this isn't right, right? If the 50 day low price is 472, how can our stock be currently trading at lower than 50 day low price, right? It should not happen that way. What are we doing wrong here? What we are, what we are doing wrong here is this. We are calculating the max here. We should not be calculating the max here. We should be calculating the minimum here. We want to get the maximum from a high price column and minimum from a low price column to get the, uh, the range the stock has traded at, right? So if I shift this and now if I run it, I get 399.4, which makes sense. And for SBI, I get 600.65. So basic just evaluating prices told me that SBI has been moving quite well lately. And ITC is not well, but ITC is much lower to its 50-day low price. So that means it has recently broken it. And SBI is much closer to its 50-day high price. So that's something that you can just see by analyzing the range of past 50 days. You can use 200 days as well. But yeah, this is how numbers will speak to you when you run this maximum, minimum, and average functions over the Google Finance functions after sorting its state and querying the particular amount of rows that you need. I hope you learned something in this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Cheers.